Tonight, the second meeting between these two schools. Maryland beat Ohio State just 20 days ago. Now the second place Terps take on Ohio State. The Buckeyes winners three of the last four games. Your starting lineups look like this. The big news, Ohio State going without Dorka Juhas. Tonight out with the ankle injury. That means Aaliyah Patty starts for the first time in her career. And Maryland for the ninth straight game goes with this lineup. Austin is in and Lewis will come off the bench. With the Maryland star, Christy Winter Scott. I'm Lisa Vines. And tell me about the shooting stars. Hey, when you're a shooter, shoot or shoot. That's what I've been told. And that's what I've seen with these two young ladies. Look at how high their efficiency is from three-point range. The freshman, Taylor Mikesell, leads all Big Ten players with 56 three-pointers made, and Carly Santoro, 42% from range. It could be a shootout here in Columbus, hey, Ohio. Hey, I'm fine with that. I like shootouts. Part of the success for Ohio State as of late has been their defensive prowess, and Patty doing her first tip of her career, getting her first start of her career, but the tip goes to Maryland. Ohio State held Maryland under 40% shooting from the floor in their last matchup just a couple of weeks ago in College Park, Maryland. Yeah, they certainly made it tough. Maryland had kind of a bad third quarter. Ohio State couldn't make up for it in the fourth quarter. Maryland took that one 75 to 69. Ohio State was in man to man defense in that first possession, and then they faced Maryland's 1 2 2 full court press and just got over the line. Isn't it fitting that the Ohio native, Taylor Mikesell, gets the first points here of this game? They were going to Kayla Waterman. She's trying to make herself a three-point shooter as of late. Trying to stretch the floor out a little bit. In the absence of Dorka Juhas with that ankle injury, that's what she did. So she's looking to pick up that pace tonight. Shakira Austin, so it's the two freshmen. Austin trying to get the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Well, last time these two teams met, Shakira Austin had a tough time scoring inside. First time she gets a touch, she finishes with contact. A freshman for Maryland, top of the list in rebounding this season. Double figures in that category, just under 11 a game. Maryland in a man-to-man -man defense to start the game, trying to smother Ohio State. That's one key that Brenda Freeze told us today at shooting practice, that their defense needs to be top-notch against Ohio State. And already a couple of shots in the first two possessions for Waterman. For Ohio State, a 5 nothing edge as Santoro tries to break it up. And a whistle and a foul called on Blair Watson. Brenda Freeze and Maryland trying to go back to back now with wins. They rebounded from a loss to Michigan State. Beat Penn State as of late. I'll tell you what, you know, we stayed at the same hotel and they were eagerly watching that Iowa Rutgers result from yesterday. Try to open things up for teams like Maryland to try to win a championship this year. Yeah, you know, only one game behind now because of that loss for Rutgers. They snapped a 10 game winning streak at Iowa. And isn't that fitting because it almost has been wide open from the middle of the pack all the way down. There's the putback and the first two for Patty. Patty was right there. It looked like Maryland had secured the rebound, but Patty got her hands on it, deflected it, and finished. Turning and facing is Stephanie Jones draws the foul there on Waterman. <laughs> Leah Patty is going to be in the right place at the right time. Off the miss shot right there to get the offensive board an easy putback. Now, Maryland, one of the top teams in terms of rebounding, plus almost 11 in rebounding margin this season. And that's one thing Brenda Free said also would be a, a top key for them, would be to board well. They had three Maryland players right there. One Ohio State player was there and got the ball in the finish. That's what Maryland is known for and has been known for. Rebounding differential that led the conference in the country, really tops in the country for six straight years. Finger roll tries to finish and it falls through for Charles. Well, Charles, after she made that shot, she has a lot of work to do defensively, riding the hip of Cruz on the way down the floor. This is exactly the start that Ohio State did not want as Patty there draws the foul on Jones. That tempo by Ohio State, that's something that Kevin McGuff 
has seen from his team last year when he had different personnel, but this year it's changed a bit. Well, certainly has changed a bit with the graduation of that senior class. We talked about it, you know the story. Mitchell Magunga, Harper, Alexa Hart, Asia Doss, Sierra Calhoun, all gone now. Very, very successful here for Ohio State. So they brought in a bunch of graduate transfers and a few freshmen. You see one of the freshmen there at the foul line, Aaliyah Patty. Not only do you have a, a, a team of, of new faces, and now with the loss of Dorothy Newhouse here today, you have a depleted kind of numbers kind of team here tonight as well. And the front line is slight for Ohio State, so they have to make sure they stay out of foul trouble as they secure that loose ball that was deflected out of bounds by Maryland. And both of their posts right now, Waterman with one foul and Patty with one foul, and there is Juhas sitting on the bench. Injured her ankle, her left ankle, in the first half of the Michigan game. She did return to play. She left at halftime to kind of get it tended to, and then she started the second half. And she told us today that it was just two sores. Maryland deflected that one out of bounds. It'll stay with Ohio State. But she told us the next day that it was so sore to put any kind of pressure on it. She had an ACL two years ago, and she said she can fight through pain, but it was just too much to bear. So she's going to try to be ready for Ohio State's game on Monday night. Yeah, never had the ankle injured. What do they lose? They lose their top score. They lose their top rebounder. If you have on the bench today. Patty trying to rip it away. They got a jump ball call. It'll be Ohio State's basketball. So about that u -Haas injury, it was something that happened. It was unintentional where her left foot, we spot shadow her, mm -hmm. they're on the left sideline and her left foot coming down there and it just twisted up on the end of that play. Yeah, it was tough and tried to limp it off, but it was just tough. The adrenaline carried her for most of that, but couldn't return. And here's one more look at it. You see that left ankle right there just rolls right over on that sideline at Michigan. And you can see how tough that was for her to get off the floor at the time of the injury. And how gingerly she was walking off. And she was trying to work out a little bit, uh, jogging at shoot around here today. She was trying to do some defensive drills as well, but she could barely put pressure on that. They are hoping that she could be back in their next game on, on Monday against Minnesota. Coach McGuff said if it was an NCAA elimination game, she would probably tape up and just fight through it. But you got to be smart so that kind of injury doesn't linger. Waterman gets the offensive rebound. Santoro can't get it with a second try. How about a third try on this possession for Ohio State? Stuck on eight points. Eight to three here. Ohio State trying to chip away at this Maryland lead. That'll work as Janae Crane gets her first bucket. I just love this freshman, Janae Crooms. No fear for the freshman. She's just a ball player. You don't have to categorize her, put her in a box. She's just out here, free-spirited young lady. Playing really, really well, especially after the new year. And an offensive foul call. We go back to Crooms. She's getting her seventh straight start tonight. Well, she's just been amazing in terms of her seamless transition to the collegiate level of basketball and just the holding of the follow through like the love and basketball movie <laughs> just hang it up there leave the gooseneck hanging i like it. the young freshman with some moxie yeah you want some personality she's definitely got it we'll keep it here in the big 10 for a while jump hook for waterman won't fall but another offensive board for ohio state they're just attacking the gaps and getting to those extra possessions on the glass waterman can't get it the Buckeyes have certainly had their chances. Maryland zero points in the last two minutes and counting as Waterman locks up Jones. Well, we said Waterman had the one foul, but boy, had that been her second foul, that would have been a conundrum for Ohio State. But right here, two high hands on the help side rotation by Michaela Waterman forcing a jump. Spin around and there's number two on Waterman. Well, <laughs> I put it in the atmosphere and see what happens. <laughs> Gee, but that's going to be tough. And honestly, Ohio State slight on that front line inside without the services of Dorka Juhas. And now Waterman with two early fouls for the Buckeyes. And so we got Patty set to check back in. Waterman absolutely disgusted with herself. You can see her reaction. 
She's one of the leaders of this team. Only Waterman and Jensen Coretti are the only players who return with any kind of experience under Kevin McGuff. So they really rely upon her for communicative leadership qualities that she brings to the table. Well, they call her grandma for some of the injuries and stuff, as well as the fact that she is the veteran on this team. She said, I've kind of actually transformed from grandma to mother now. <laughs> That's a good thing. I kind of take care of this team now. They kick out into the corner. Santoro rings it up, and Ohio State has its first lead tonight. I told you, shoot or shoot. Santoro can light it up 42% on the season from three. Santoro and Ohio native. One of those transfers from Bowling Green. Two of the last three games, she's been in double figures. As Lewis has checked in, Shanice Lewis, who was the starting point guard for Maryland, now coming off the bench for the eighth straight game. Austin nearly with a steal. It'll stay Ohio State basketball. Santoro spotted up in the corner, crooms the freshman with the eagle eye. Three ball, corner, first quarter. Thank you for joining us in game number two of this doubleheader here on BTN. Christy Winter Scott and Lisa Byington with you. Well, we saw Indiana beat Michigan earlier, and the doors have opened up with Rutgers losing for the first time in right. conference play. Opened up, especially for teams like Maryland here tonight. Well, it's as the Big Ten turns this season. I mean, every day you take a look at the standings, and someone has air quoting upset someone else but these teams have played extremely well out of conference maryland beat south carolina early on michigan state beat oregon early on and everyone is beating everyone down the line in conference play so it's going to make for an exciting big 10 tournament in indianapolis in march as it always is but this year the parity and the depth of talent and consistency has really been impressive across the board you mentioned some of those impressive non-conference wins that I think Michigan State and Minnesota in particular, as you watch Kearns with the people roll, Michigan State and Minnesota in particular have suffered greatest, I think, from the non-conference to the conference season. Four of Michigan State's losses coming into today, four of the five in conference play. All five of Minnesota's losses here so far in conference play. Oh, what a strong start for Minnesota, though. Undefeated through 12 games and then hit the conference and have struggled, like you said. Three. Maryland knocks in a three by Blair Watson. And that is key to get Blair Watson going a little bit. Blair Watson just three points, just one of six shooting in the last game against Penn State. Blair Watson coming back off of that ACL injury and physically 100%, but mentally still trying to trust her body on the recovery process. There's the runner in the soft touch for Santoro. There's Santoro, and she's just fearless in terms of her attack and her choices with her shot selection are very mature. And getting tangled up there down on the post. We got a turnover here, I think, for Maryland. And, and Brenda Freeze was saying, you know what, there was some contact. There was a reason why Stephanie Jones went down. Yeah. No call, though, on that play. Well, sometimes when close players get on their heels and the chair gets pulled by the defensive player, you, you lose your balance. But I don't know if that was the case in that particular situation. But you have to stay on the balls of your feet as an offensive player. You want that contact. When that contact moves away, you lose it. You I, always, lose that I always love that move. Oh, move away. Pull, pull away. The chair. You're the smaller guard and you just kind of pull away. Well, that's the worst for close players. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Because you, you want to you gain the contact. You want to gain that contact as an offensive post player. But when the defense moves away, it's, it's tough. Brenda Freeze imploring her team to, to pick it up and, and to fight for what they want on the court. It's not going to be a given. Well, she wants someone to step up. You know, you, you can see her there exactly there, kind of pleading with her team. And that's kind of been the mantra for her this season is the fact that she's looking for a leader. She's she's almost looking for the bad guy on the team, the someone that's gonna kinda take everyone by under their ring and, and grab them by the arm and just say, hey, you're gonna follow me. Right, and, it, and the leadership so far this season has come from the coaching staff. She wants it to be from the players, and right there you saw Stephanie Jones just losing her balance and giving up a possession, and Brenda Freeze wondering what in the wide world of sports is going on on the block. Well, there was no call on that play. Instead, it was a turnover. And then we got a shot clock violation back the other way for Ohio State. 
Well, I'm a good lip reader, and I think in, in part in what Brenda Free said in that last timeout was you're better than that. You're better than what you're playing like. And, you know, if you hear that as a player, that should motivate you. You understand that you, you have more to give. So we'll see if that kicks in for Maryland right here. You started out the game strong, but the last couple of possessions have been disjointed offensively. And there's a case in point right there, and almost the exact same play. Again, they were trying to target Stephanie Jones. Now, Jones is one of the, the three major juniors who get playing time on this team. Blair Watson, Kyla Charles is the other. A junior class that, that she feels could be the leadership class on this roster. They've only got the one senior, Brianna Frazier. And a tie up there. Well, to, to be a good leader, you, do, you can't worry about how people will feel after you hold them accountable. When teammates hold each other accountable, that makes for a great team. You want the leadership to come from the players. You want them to work with and for each other on the floor. But you're right, Maryland right now just looks like they're trying to figure things out as Watson commits another foul. She's got two now in the game. Maryland on their last possession just didn't match angles. Yes, yeah, Stephanie Jones was open, but Taylor Mikesell was up here at the top. She's got to take that ball the foul line extended and enter the ball with a bounce pass. you got to match the angle of the post player. Janae Coons can't get the first free throw to fall. But since Kevin McGuff had a hunch of putting her in the starting lineup, she has responded, and, and frankly, she has said that that kind of added to her confidence, which has added to her production. I mean, you know, she when you have confidence from your coach and your teammates as a freshman, it just makes it a lot easier to be a sponge. So they see something in me that maybe I don't see in myself all the way yet, but... Wow, they put me in this situation. They trust me. I better trust myself as well. And a tie up there. And the fall on Carmen Grande. Well, take me through this entry pass. When we were talking about matching angles, you see Taylor Mikesell. She needs to take one or two dribbles down to her right so that she can match the angle of Stephanie Jones so she can hold that seal and collect the pass. That's just a tough angle. If you don't see the number of the post player, you can't throw it. Vujicic. She gets the bucket. And her brother Sasha, Sasha Vujicic played in the NBA for 11 seasons, most notably a championship season with the LA Lakers and Kobe Bryant. So basketball's in the blood is what you're saying. Oh, no question. <laughs> Mike still thought about it. Big Ten's leading three-point shooter. Dump down pass, a little high-low action. Austin to Jones. Maryland's two bigs finding each other nicely. Giving the Terps the lead right back. Well, when you draw defenders, more than one, more than two, more than three helpers, Somebody else on the team is going to be open. Mike Sell with a nice bounce pass there. Three defenders surrounding the freshman, Shakira Austin, and she found Stephanie Jones downstairs for the drop-off pass and finish. But that's what you have to do. You have to be cognizant of your surroundings and which teammate is going to help us score. Sometimes it's not your shot that's the best shot. But what's the best shot for the team? Now, Shakira Austin, she could have taken that shot with three people hanging on her. You know, contesting that shot would have been more difficult, but why not pass to someone who's wide open because the defense has committed to the ball? Well, State Farm assist of the game. That was big to big, post to post. Back the other way, it's Ohio State's post. Something about Aaliyah Patty. She's got that aggressive look and mentality to her tonight. She knows that a lot is depending on her in terms of offensive production inside, rebounding prowess as well for her. Most minutes she's played in conference plays, 22 minutes. Well, there's a good defense right there on Austin. Well, they're working around to Mike South. That time can't get it to fall. Maryland was a perfect two for two before that miss from three. And it's coming out of the ashes there to reset the offense for Ohio State. Plenty of time to work with, at least on the game clock. Now single digits here on the shot clock. Austin came over from behind. One of the best shot blockers in the country. Three blocks a game 
for the freshman, Shakira Austin, right here, timing it and swatting it away. And she does it by keeping the principle of verticality with her body as to not get a foul call. And they take Brian Frasch for baseline. Patty is playing with some purpose tonight. And the body and the and one back the other way. Man, Stephanie Jones can get up and down the floor. A defensive transition was a key that Kevin McGuff told us prior to the game. But watch Patty right here. A nice drive along the baseline and finish with those long arms up right at the rim. And she's playing with some passion. And just right here, you see the defense was not set as the contact was made by Jones. Stephanie Jones, so athletic. Get up and down the floor. She's one of the glue players, Brenda Fries has said, for Maryland. One of the top defensive players on the team. She leads the team in steals. They were double checking on who the foul was on. They give it to Adriana Miller of Ohio State. Maryland drops back into their 3-2 matchup zone after trying to get some pressure in the backcourt. Crooms looking for the spin move. That was like a Kobe <laughs> one foot fadeaway. <laughs> From, from half court, Mike Sell is short. Didn't that look like a Kobe one foot fadeaway? It was Kobe esque and Maya Moore esque. She had the leg out and everything. Good call with the Maya Moore as well. Hey, time last year, at least in 2018, the Big Ten Tournament Championship, these two schools met, but that's when Ohio State had folks like Kelsey Mitchell playing for them. Yeah, Kelsey Mitchell's moved on now to the WNBA with her teammate at Ohio State, Stephanie Mabunga, there with the Indiana Fever. Ohio State takes the championship in Indianapolis last season after Maryland had won three consecutive Big Ten tournament titles. And you see the fits that Ohio State as a Big Ten team, since Maryland has been a Big Ten member in the fifth season now that they're in the Big Ten Conference, Ohio State has four wins against them, and you got to go with the rest of the Big Ten, all other 12 schools, only have six wins against hmm. Maryland. It's impressive just to come into a new conference and to make a statement that Maryland did their first season going 18-0, running the table in the conference and winning the conference tournament. But last year, Ohio State and Maryland split. Ohio State won that championship, but earlier in the season, they only met one time, and Maryland won that game 99-69. to It was a 30-point victory, and that game, Kevin McGuff said, that changed their season in terms of them knowing exactly who they were and what their philosophy was going to be moving forward from that loss. Well, Kevin McGuff might kind of downplay this rivalry and this series a little bit now uh, just because he says, you know, the makeup, especially of his team, is, sure. is a little bit different. But the fact of the matter is, even with a different makeup, they're still giving this Maryland team fits. They did in the first meeting back on January 5th, and they're doing it again tonight. Sometimes it's just all about matchups. And uh, Maryland has two freshmen on the floor at times, so they're pretty young as well. They haven't played against this Ohio State program. Mike Sell with her second three-point make. And again, Taylor Mike Sell. Massillon, Ohio native, about an hour and a half or two hours, depending on how fast you drive. She's got about 30 family members and friends here tonight. It's just exciting for her to be back home. Her head coach couldn't make it tonight, but she has a lot of her teammates and friends from high school in attendance for sure. And of course, a legendary work ethic that has added to her three-point shooting prowess in year number one of Division I basketball goes off of Maryland last. Taylor Mikesell averaging about three threes per game. And she credits kind of her parents in getting that, that kind of work ethic from. Oh yeah, her father is a surgeon and 
He runs and gets on a bike. He does marathons and everything like that. And Taylor said that that's where she gets her dogged work ethic for basketball from. She sees her dad doing it, so he's leading by example still. Well, Kevin and Teresa, Taylor's parents, both in attendance here today. And, and you mentioned, so dad is an emergency room physician now. Mom is a second grade teacher, both very regimented in their routines. And, and, and dad, when he's uh, riding his bike, every year he goes, he has a goal of going about 100 miles. And every birthday, he will hop on the bike and he will ride basically his age. So if you turn 48 or 49 or 50, guess what? You are riding a bike for 48, 49, or 50 miles in that day. Right. Taylor said her dad texted her and said, hey, I rode for 55 miles. She said, why don't you just go for 60? I mean, you've done 55, so what's the holdup? But, you know, that's the... That's the kind of mindset that she has from him. Of course, since he's only 34 years old, he's still got a ways to go <laughs> before he's pedaling for 51 miles. There you go. <laughs> As we've talked about some of the bigs here for Ohio State, picking up some fouls, some key players now for Maryland. Watson and Charles with a couple of personals for the Terps. Vujicic can't get it off the heel of the basket. Ohio State off and running. You don't see many transition buckets from the Buckeyes. They're certainly getting some second chance opportunities that you don't see Maryland usually give up a third opportunity here in this possession for the Buckeyes. Yeah, offensive rebounding has been the big story for Ohio State. And they have extended this possession. Almost four offensive boards in one possession there for Ohio State, my goodness. That's 10 offensive boards. For Ohio State. Yeah, 10 out of the 17. As Jones kind of quiets the crowd a little bit with the baseline jumper. There's a much needed bucket there to break the spell in terms of some offensive rhythm for Maryland. A couple of shooters, a couple of scorers, I should say. Watson, your shooter, and Charles, your scorer on the bench right now here for Maryland with a couple of fouls. Offensive rebounds against Maryland this year, January 5th, seven for the entire game. We still have, what, seven minutes left to play in the second quarter, and they've already surpassed that with 10. Well, they have a seven to zero advantage on second chance points as well. So a main reason why they're in this game, only down two possessions to Maryland right now. Grande with the step back. And here's Mike Sell. Really kind of the leading scorer here on this team of Terps that are on the floor right now, in addition to Stephanie Jones. Ohio State picks it up, Santoro draws the contact and one. Well, a broken play to say the least. Both teams hustling for the 50-50 basketball. A deflection there, balls on the floor, who wants it? Vujicic tried to get it. And then here comes Ohio State, pushing tempo. Let's see if Lewis gets there. Not established prior to the gather, and that's why that was called a block. Carly Santoro, again, one of those graduate transfers from Bowling Green. Had a chance to talk to her today at shoot-around. And she admitted that this is a group playing with a chip on their shoulder, a group that doesn't necessarily weren't recruited by Big Ten teams. Santoro, as an example, had a was getting some sniffs and some looks from some Big Ten teams, had an injury. So some teams had backed off. Bowling Green did not. Right? So that's where she decided to play most of her undergrad. Yeah, well, what a bonus she has been, especially from the outside, knocking in threes for the team, spreading the floor. But one little Achilles heel, she's only 63% from the free throw line, missed finishing that and one because of that. And an offensive foul call, Vujicic. And so Maryland's got to be careful. The Terps. About seven players now with at least one foul. Well, when you're struggling to score on consecutive possessions, you tend to see some forced shots. And that's what you can't do. You have to stay poised and composed. Let your spacing take care of which shot is the best shot for the team. Maryland basketball. 
kind of an empty possession there for Ohio State. And Brenda Freeze and the Terps. You don't know when they found out that Dorka Juhas wouldn't be playing in this game. But they obviously were preparing and, and prepping and for what you thought would be a, a showdown. Yeah, I, I was waiting for it. I was hoping for that. Uh, you know, Dorka Juhas, she had 18 points and 11 rebounds in the last matchup with Maryland. So it was really a, a good showing for her in terms of getting another double-double in the season. A waterman has checked back in for Ohio State. She had to sit out a little bit with a couple of fouls, but she's back in now for the Buckeyes. Five and a half to play here before the half. Lewis stays on her feet, getting hawked, though, by Crooms. Lewis to Jones, back to Frazier. And she walks with it. Nice defensive stop by Ohio State. They say a child will lead you, and right here, Crooms with the block, the freshman. Again, no fear on either side of the court. Well, Janae Crooms, and she is just fantastic in terms of the energy she brings to the table. And a traveling violation back the other way. Miller. Maryland looking for some consistent offensive production. I mean, when they have settled in, they've been able to shoot 53% so far in the first half, but the shot selections are, are few and far between. They've only attempted 17 shots. Ohio State has attempted 25. Sloppy play, a little bit back and forth between these two teams, but it's still knit and tuck. Women's basketball on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. On Tangy River, downtown Columbus, Ohio. Maryland has the three-point edge over the Ohio State Buckeyes. Christy Winter, Scott Lisa Byington with you. Janae Crooms, we've talked about how she has now become an everyday starter here for the Buckeyes. Really past the, the new year, and it's been a new Crooms look. Hey, what have we been saying about 2019? Be serene in 2019, and Janae Crooms has fit the bill for the Buckeyes. She is just as serene and calm and cool. She's a freshman, and you think freshmen are going to come in a little tentative, trying to test the water. Not Crooms. She's plugging her nose and diving full in cannonball, and she has just been playing with a strong amount of confidence. And you can't coach that. She's coming. She loves the game. She's enthusiastic in practice, and that's what kept Kevin McGuff loves about her. Yeah, really good personality. Very outgoing, too, by the way. Would introduce herself to us at Shoot Around. Not many freshmen do that. I think it's because you're so intimidating. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's really special to see. And now you see a defensive stop here by Maryland. But it's really special to see young women come in at 18 and have the level of just self-confidence. And I just love to see that in young women. You know, don't be timid, don't be shy, be yourself. And that's what she said, I'm just being myself. I'm just chilling is what she said in air quotes <laughs> after that. And it's just, you know, and she's just living her best life right now and playing her heart out. First college start came on New Year's Eve against Nebraska. She actually only played nine minutes in that game, but has steadily increased her production minutes wise and scoring wise and a little bit everything. Second lead score here tonight. In fact, only three players really have scored here for Ohio State. Crooms is one of them. Santoro and Patty. And Patty getting her first start gets the feed from Waterman there. And Patty's having a nice showing in the first half. Well, that's what happens when you keep great spacing and move the basketball. That ball wasn't with anyone more than two seconds. It was a swing, swing, find the high post and dump it down inside. Excellent execution by Ohio State. Meanwhile, Maryland with five turnovers really in the last three minutes. Some sloppy play. Defense by Waterman there on the baseline, not allowing Jones to cut the corner. And Lewis trying to take it, was going baseline, really had nothing to, to work with. Well, this is why you make the extra pass. Penetration to the elbow by Crooms, and then right here, entry to the high post that makes the defense move. That's what you have to do against any kind of zone, matchup zone, make the defense, make decisions, and then make the correct pass. Jones with the fadeaway. She's kind of been the go-to answer. She's in double figures now. And that's the one thing with Maryland. You can't choose to shut down just one or two players. All five players can hurt you offensively from different areas on the floor. 
We got an offensive foul call on Ohio State. That's the second personal on Patty. Waterman with two, and now Patty with two. And then, you know, when you extend your arms, you know you try to protect your upper body when you're setting a screen in women's basketball. But when you extend and make that contact, that's when you have the infraction called. Picking on the little ones. Little 5-H in East Lewis. Me being a little one, I got to stick up for him. <laughs> Kick out to Mike Zell. We had a thousand yesterday, and it's tough <laughs> for her to get her thousand made shots in on off days when they're on the road. 500 on game days, but she finds the time to do it. Carly Santoro. Carly Santoro with the bucket for Ohio State. Actually, on the road, though, Mike Zell even admitted to us that her, her well-known routine of trying to make even 500 makes on game day gets sacrificed a little bit. She doesn't have the time. We'll take an Uber to You're find right. a, a local YMCA to get it done. Exactly. And she said, well, I couldn't do my 500 game day makes today, but the 1,000 I made yesterday are going to have to do. Santoro once again. Back-to-back -back buckets now for the Buckeyes. Santoro with 11 points. Yeah, Santoro has been... The key to Ohio State's consistent offensive production so far in the first half. In the absence of Dorka Juhas and that ankle injury, a lot of players have had to pick it up and play a collective style of offensive production, making plays. On the push, it's Grande Santoro with another offensive board. Miller tries to step through, ripped away by Austin. Maryland trying to hang on, only up by four points here with just a couple minutes left in the first half. Jones gives it back out to Mike Sell, who knocks in her third three of the game, the in-out end game. And then right back to Jones, the two-man game as she gets along the baseline for the reverse and the finish. So Miller now with a couple of personal fouls for Ohio State. About a minute and a half to play right into Grande's hands. Wide open look as Mike still tries to taste her down, but it's the bucket for Grande, her first points tonight. And Ohio State making a little bit of a charge. You know, sometimes offensively you fall into the trap of, okay, we've run so many plays, five on zero that sometimes you don't anticipate players shooting the gap defensively right there. Santoro gets into the passing lane and finishes on the break on that live ball turnover, and that's just a long pass to make. What you have to do if you're Shanice Lewis, she's a, an excellent player in terms of her assist-to-turnover ratio, so you don't see her make those kinds of errors on offense a lot of times. The sophomore is very wise with her choices, but on that particular play, she needed to shorten the passing lane, get to maybe closer to the lane line, and make a better pass. That one was a lollipop pass in the air, easy to anticipate on the weak side. Lollipops are good for carnivals, not, yes, they not for passes, not right, for passes. at basketball games. <laughs> no, ma'am. Carmen Grande, pretty good, though, at reading off those passes. Remember, she had those five steals against Indiana. Led part of that comeback to beat the Hoosiers. Just right here, you see the square up by Jones. And just not that left foot by the defender needs to be squared to the right foot of the driver. And Adriana Miller was not established as the defender there. Miller with three fouls, Patty with two, and Waterman with two. Back in for the Buckeyes, Nanja Already 13 points for Stephanie Jones. She's right at her season, season average already. Hasn't missed a shot from the floor. And now four or five from the free throw line. Charles has checked back in. She's barely played in this first half, by the way. Eight point or eight minutes. She's been in foul trouble. Eight minutes, two for Watson, who's also been in foul trouble. So how good does Maryland feel still being up by four with those two players barely playing in this first half? Well, I think they feel pretty good. But they've also shot 60% from the floor, which is safe. Though. Patty up against about three Terps on that opportunity. Grande right there almost got another pickoff. 
defensively right in the mix. Two second differential. And Mike Sell, round day all over. Six on the shot clock. Mike Sell to Jones, looking for her shot. That'll be a shot clock violation. Another strong defensive stand by Ohio State. Maryland was looking to get a high ball screen and roll with Shakira Austin as the possible collector of the pass on the roll, but Ohio State closed that option. Now 15 turnovers for the Terps. Oh, that hit the front of the rim. For joining us, Christy Winter Scott and Lisa Byington with you. Well, you have a Kyla Charles who only played nine minutes. You have a Blair Watson who played eight minutes. And you have a Maryland basketball team who is turning it over. So you go check, 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 but they still got the lead here in the first half. Right, 15 first half turnovers for Maryland. Just too many empty possessions for the Terps, especially since they're shooting the ball at a high clip. They're shooting 60% from the floor, four of five from three. So you need to maximize the opportunities that you have in the quarter court on the offensive end and not give up easy baskets the other way for Ohio State. Live ball turnovers. They scored seven points off of Maryland's 15 turnovers. So yeah, well, and it's because Ohio State's defense has been kind of tough and mixing it up a little bit against Maryland. Well, this was the last possession of the first half, so Maryland trying to gain some kind of momentum and rhythm on the offensive end, looking for a high ball screen. Shakira Austin closed off, couldn't roll to get an easy bucket. Stephanie Jones had to fire up a tough contest shot and Ohio State did a great job of boxing out another category that Ohio State is winning 18 to 12 on the glass over Maryland who averages plus 10 in their rebounding margin on the season so tell me why Maryland has this lead at halftime <laughs> They're shooting the lights out when they have an opportunity. 12 of 20 from the floor, four of five from three. Although they missed that one and Shakir Austin gets hit on the putback. But, you know, I look at the other side of things offensively for Ohio State. They've taken several more shots. Only 12 of 31 though. Maryland was 12 of 20, Ohio State 12 of 31. So they've taken more shots because they've gotten the stops and the boards, but they haven't shot the ball particularly well. And that's another reason why Maryland has the lead. Austin misses the first, but you see Patty now with the three personal fouls and only a few seconds into the third quarter. So now Kevin McGuff has some decisions to make here. With what is his starting center here for today? Again, Ohio State playing without Dorka Juhas, out with an ankle injury for this evening. And so Patty getting her first career start. Go forward to have her pick up another one. And that would be a critical situation. They would have to go really small against a really long athletic Maryland team. Austin got the block on the one end and Charles drawing the foul on the other end. Uh, Shakira Austin, something about what? Her timing, her length, makes her so good. I think it's her grit also. And grit isn't just physical. Grit is mental. And right there you saw the defensive prowess of Shakira Austin, the freshman for Maryland. And so McGuff didn't take Patty out and now has picked up her fourth personal. So Here's look the, at this foul. Here's the foul on Charles coming in and getting hammered right there. And that's just, when you're playing with three personals, that's just not a smart move. And when you're a freshman, you know, <laughs> you have to you have to kind of pull the reins back a little bit if you're her. You, you have to understand your importance on the court. A couple of fouls in the first 40 seconds of play here in this third quarter. Mike Sell with the runner. Almost had the soft touch to fall. Charles gets the second rebound and feeds Jones, who's only really missed one shot from the floor here tonight. Playing efficiently like her older sister, Brianna Jones, who played for Maryland and shot 60% for her career. From the baseline, and it falls for Carly Santoro. We've got to find Carly Santoro early. You cannot let her catch and have a second of window space. Got to close the window and the curtains too. Over 100 threes made in her career when you go to Bowling Green. And now for the one year at Ohio State. Mike's up into the lane for two. 
Mysel gets those runners because of how well she shoots the three ball. So you're going to get a crowd at the three-point line, so now you can go by. Nice read by her. And they feed Waterman nicely. Buckeyes touch the ball on that possession. And that's what Ohio State has been able to do well this evening. Move the basketball well and make the extra pass. They have six assists. Pops out. Maryland's going to get a second crack at it. Watson pulls and fires. Watson now just one of two shooting here tonight. It's a good read right there by Carly Santoro coming up the floor. She had Charles on her left pocket and knew she had that contact. And instead of pulling it back out, with a retreat dribble, she kept going and made Charles make that contact and foul. Yeah, that's the third personal now in Charles. So far, she's staying in the game. And so far, Brenda Freeze hasn't gone to her bench. And she's back to that man-to-man -to, -man to start the second half. They had done some matchup zone there in the second quarter. Who's challenging her? Waterman trying to tap it and keep it alive. Now into the hands of Mike Sell. With defensive transition. The key that Kevin McGuff said would be vitally important for his team. They have to sprint back and contain the paint. Nice job on that possession defensively so far for the Buckeyes. Austin calling for it back. Charles will take it one on one. And she'll get it right back, or will she? Ohio State retains. I think the crowd wanted to travel, but Jones did a good job of keeping her pivot foot planted. To the wing, Santoro once again for three. Santoro for three. Three of five shooting now for Santoro. And she is lighting it up as we knew that she would. She and Mike Sell both with three threes. Or Mike Sell has hits three for four. And Santoro has three of the four here for Ohio State. He's got the ball up the top. Coach's kid, runner this time off the glass. It's good. One of those big nights. Carly Santoro owning it. Carly Santoro has been lighting it up from the outside. So what happens when you... Carly Santoro on the left, leading all scores with 19. Dad on the right there. Corey Santoro, who was their high school coach, coaches here at Bellevue. You can see the, he's still <laughs> sporting the Bellevue High School garb as well. And Mom Mary Beth there to take this one in. And Corey, awfully close with Patrick Klein, the associate head coach here for Ohio State. And where they grew up in, in Bellevue, Ohio, is actually halfway between Columbus and Ann Arbor. So actually, Carly's dad, Corey grew up as a, a Michigan fan, still mm -hmm. is a Michigan fan. You, you notice he's not wearing any Ohio State garb. He, he is not. Tonight. And when he does wear Ohio State garb, he makes sure that it says Ohio State women's basketball. Must be specific. That's yeah, the only sport for Ohio State that he supports <laughs> with his daughter here transferring and playing here for one year. Yes. But what a night she's having. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, she has 19 points. The rest of the team for Ohio State has combined for 19 points. So she is having herself a game for sure. But that's what we said at the beginning of the game. Shoot or shoot. And she is knocking in shots for the Buckeyes, and they're playing staunch defense as well, especially now to start the second half where they're been on a 7 0 run. Carlos Santoro put up some points there in high school, ranked 10th all time in Ohio history, as Crooms follows Charles on the shot. Well, initially, I look like Janae Crooms got a piece of the ball, but it was the follow through and the body contact on the shooter that earned her that foul. Shots. And Charles as the leading scorer averages about 16 points per game. Again, has gotten into foul trouble. Brenda Freeze has elected to leave her in with the three personals. But a very, very quiet night in terms of Kyla Charles standards. And she's averaging 16 points a game. Top six in the Big Ten in scoring. 
six boards a game. So she does it all. And she also, on the defensive end, will guard multiple positions on the floor. And you see Maryland back now into their matchup zone. 3-2. Toro can't get it that time. One of her few misses tonight. But if you're Kevin McGuff, you like that choice of a shot in terms of where it happened. You hit that high post area right below the top line. That's a perfect cut, but she was just off balance. She was leaning to her right. She's a great shooter when her feet are under her and her elbow is under the ball. Mike Sill around the screen, gets the body and the bucket and the foul. Taylor Mike Sill, you see her parents there, mom, giving a nice hearty applause for this play. Mike Sill turns the corner and kisses it off the glass nice and high. Jones gives her a little high five, and you know, LeBron James came to see her play in high school. I mean, this is a kid who could just generate a lot of community interest to her team. Her team just retired her jersey this season. She went back for that earlier this year. Had all kinds of ticket requests, as you can imagine. It's her first time back playing in the state of Ohio. Never got to play in this building. Lost in the regional finals in high school. As she said, she got to watch several of her friends compete for state championships at Value City Arena. You mentioned the Jersey retirement. There you go. That's awesome. You know, there's nothing like that, and that's something that will be there for eternity. So, you know, when she has kids and they go back and they see that jersey up there, there's a story she can tell as one who would know from that, right? Christy Winter Scott? I mean, <laughs> something like that. Interesting that she's 24. That's not available. Right. Stephanie Jones has that number for Maryland. Something. Something. And we mentioned it's the return to the state of Ohio for Taylor Mikesell. And look at the recent Ohio natives here for Maryland. Howard Pavlet, Confoy, and then Mikesell. And you could really say that those three players, Mike Sell hasn't had a chance to do this yet, but the other three players have played in at least one Final Four here for Maryland. Yeah, you know, it's just amazing. You look at the names there and you know what they did for the program and are continuing to do in society now as graduates. And, you know, Chloe is getting into broadcasting and she's doing a lot of work there and she's just been outstanding. And it's just fun to see the connections. Maryland sticking with their 3-2 zone, as you see here. Cutters coming through, trying to attack that high post area and the short corner area as well. Those are the sweet spots, the weak spots against that kind of defensive set. Working around the Crews, who thought about it. Kick out to Santoro, who's had the hot hand. One dribble pull up, and it's good, and she's got a 21-point game. Santoro with another great offensive read. Knew the defense was going to come out and close hard on the three-point line. Forced her to run off of that line. She pulled up with that mid-range nicely. 25 points against Michigan State. Season high. She's close to tying her three-point, yeah, her career high for three-point makes. She's got three of them right now. In that Michigan State game, she hit four. And Charles trying to get going for Maryland. Only two or four from the floor, so she hasn't had many touches, but shooting obviously 50% when she does get a touch. So they probably need to go through her on the offensive end to get her going a little bit more. Turn around for Waterman, will get it. Second opportunity, and Miller will go to the line. Monday on BTN, the Big Ten Women's Sports Report keeps you updated, up to date on everything happening in the conference, highlights, interviews, analysis. Don't miss the Big Ten Women's Sports Report. That's Monday at 7 Eastern right here on BTN. Vera Jones, I think, was so good this past week on the Women's Sports Report that we asked her back, actually, for next week. Fantastic. Do you think that's a smart decision? I love it. Coach Jones. Coach Vera Jones. I love it. Life coach. Basketball coach. <laughs> Five-point edge here for Maryland. Mike Sell. A little bit off. 
Every time she shoots it, though, you feel like it's going to go in. Off the fingertips of Mike Sell, and it's off to the races for Grande for the easy two. And then Grande once again on the run out. Another live ball turnover for Maryland, something they were trying to get rid of doing after committing 15 turnovers in that first half. It's 17 now for Maryland. A season high, 24 earlier this year. When you turn the ball over that much, we spoke about it a little bit in that first half. I mean, those are missed opportunities. And for Maryland to be shooting the ball at a 50% clip from the floor, 57% from three, those are missed opportunities there. You can't even test the offense because you're throwing the ball wide. But Kevin McGuff and his squad give them credit for grinding it out on the defensive end and forcing actions that, that Maryland wants to do and then taking what they want away. And they're plus two right now still on Maryland in terms of their rebound. Maryland already, they're sitting in the bonus now. Two minutes and 43 seconds left in this quarter. Well, Brenda Fries electing to make a starting lineup change. About nine games back, we talk about Shanice Lewis is now coming off the bench. Isn't playing as much. You have uh, Shakira Austin who's now starting here for Maryland. And you, and you mentioned the fact that Lewis doesn't turn the ball over as no. much. So you, you take your point guard out, but you take your point guard out until you add some scoring production and some defensive production. So where you miss something maybe in the ball protection category, you gain in another category. Right, but when that ball is not being protected, then now you're, you're in a fight on the road in the Big Ten. Waterman left all alone. <laughs> And it's a two-point Maryland edge. Somehow these Buckeyes in the last four or five games have found a way to stay in it and have found a way to upset some ranked teams. On this very floor, they went back-to-back -back against Indiana and Michigan State. Coombs is short. And they've done it with their defense. They have just been everywhere, scrappy, getting deflections. Into the corner for Watson. There's a shot that she has practiced since that corner look time and time again. She just needs to spot up there and she commits a foul on Crooms on the other side right after it. But Ohio State has done a brilliant job in terms of finding the open player. They're not going to force up a shot. There's nothing there. But what there is is an open cutter. So they're moving well without the basketball. And the players with the ball are making the correct read for the team. Blair Watson has picked up her third. She'll take a seat. Charles is out. Jones is out. They've got two freshmen on the floor for Maryland. With Mike Sell and Austin. Their lone senior, Frazier, is out there. So Mike Sell arguably is really the only player out there right now who can score consistently for Maryland. Shanice Lewis, their point guard, has checked in. Vujicic is in as well for Maryland. And they've been wondering if Brianna Frazier could have a third straight solid game here for Maryland. It went off of Frazier's hands there defensively. Here's Mike Sell. Two high hands for Frazier inside to contain the paint and protect the rim. That's what Maryland needs right now. Stops and then scores. But Ohio State has made that very difficult this evening. Frazier looking to turn towards the hoop. Well, she led Maryland really the last couple of games, almost 17 and a half points per game, four rebounds per game. 22 and six against Michigan State. 13 points in 19 minutes against Penn State. Again, she's the lone senior on this team. They find Frazier from the out of bounds. And that's what happens when you take a hard cut. You know, at this juncture of the season, you go through 5 on 0 and it's like, da -da, let me just go through this play. But if you take a hard, purposeful cut with intention, you get an easy bucket. Crooms for three, can't get it. Another opportunity for Ohio State. And a turnover for the Buckeyes from the out-of-bounds. Hey, when you take a hard cut, watch Frazier right here coming right into your living room. 
That's how hard you're supposed to take a cut. And as a senior, she may not be the most vocal leader, but she's leading right now with her action. She got a stop down here with a two-hand block shot to contest at the rim. And on the other side, taking a hard cut like that for a finish. Brenda Freeze has challenged her, bring me two things. Bring me consistency and bring me energy. And bring me a third straight game. She didn't really say that. <laughs> but that's what she was thinking. Well, she would love that for sure. You know, she sat down with her juniors this past Saturday and had a little meeting about leadership and saying, you're capable of getting this done. It doesn't have to be the one senior who's going to be the leader or designated as the vocal leader. As we look at Waterman's third foul here, committed against Austin. Yeah, you see her breaking the plane there in terms of the principle of verticality. Yes, your hands are up in the air, but are they straight up? They have to be straight up to the ceiling, not leaning towards the offensive player who's shooting the basketball. That's a hard thing for especially a post to do. It is, because it goes down and comes back up when they blow the whistle. Like, no, they were up. Like, no, they came from here and went back up. You said it is with such a pain to look on yeah, your face. because it's tough, because you want to get that ball. <laughs> ball is right there. Waterman was upset with herself after picking up that third, but she did a good job in waiting a long time and playing through. The number she had picked up a couple of quick fouls yeah, in the sure first did. half. Sure did. Those posts are important, especially tonight for Ohio State. Depleted at that position, playing again without their leading score and rebounder in Juhas. As Grande had to force it up, Mike Sell, a race against the clock. Oh, she double dribbled right at midcourt. It looks like she was trying to pass it possibly up ahead to Vujicic, but the option closed down because Ohio State got back there defensively, and then she was going to take it herself, but picked it up. So 1.2 left here in the quarter. Jensen Caretti is in for Ohio State. It'll be Grande taking it out. Grande looking for Queenland, who tries to get it off. Do and, and really Maryland, though Maryland was not a part of the Big Ten when it won its national championship. We'll claim it now that they're a Big Ten member, one of the only two schools in women's basketball that have won national championships at this level. Sarah Vujicic getting that three to go to push Maryland's lead to 10. And that's what Maryland needs. They have to get consecutive scores. And after that third quarter, they were plus one in the rebounding category. So gaining ground on the glass has helped them get into this game and keep a lead. Well, they leave Lewis wide open and she makes them pay for it. And now Kevin McGuff has called a timeout. Doesn't that feel good to hit a shot and force the opposing coach to call the timeout? Nothing like that. Maryland back-to-back -back threes. Like so, finding Lewis for the triple. Maryland had a quick five points here to start this quarter, and Ohio State had to call a timeout. We got production by a couple of players here for Maryland, starting with Stephanie Jones, who first of all had a really good first half to get Maryland going. Well, Stephanie Jones right now is 7 of 11 from the floor, and she has just been tremendously effective inside. She slips the creases and makes herself available for easy opportunities in the paint. Taylor Mike Sell, the freshman, the sharpshooter, the work ethic through the roof. Knocks in threes and just creates offense for Maryland by stretching the floor. And you've got to find her earlier. She will make you pay indeed from the outside. And she's only a freshman. We'll see what she's doing here tonight. We are definitely going through Jones tonight. The 18 points only missed the four shots. She's got the three assists. She found Sakura. Austin a couple of times. All right, and I think, you know, obviously in the absence of Dorka Juhas for Ohio State, well, Maryland goes inside early and often anyway, but the fact that they don't have a lot of depth inside and a presence like Juhas, I think that's changed some things for Jones and her availability when they try to close up Austin or Frazier or anyone else inside. She's made herself available. If she wanted us to add two fouls to that graphic, we got to do that now because she just picked up her second personal. There's Dorka Yuha sitting on the bench, again, out with the ankle injury that she suffered against Michigan on Sunday. She's hoping to be back for Monday's contest with her teammates. It's tough to miss, but she has to be smart with her body, and that's what she told us today. First game she's had to miss. You mentioned that she had to deal with an ACL tear a couple years ago, though this is the first ankle injury for her. A leading scorer and leading rebounder for Ohio State out tonight. 
she's just very special. I mean, only a freshman herself. And you know, she just has the ability to stretch the floor, put her on the deck, knock in threes at 6'4. Give it back to Austin, who says she would eventually like to compare her game to Elena Deladon and a Kevin Durant. If that's the case, she's got a hit from the outside. Santoro tries to hit from the outside. But the pass, though, from Crooms, the freshman. Man, I tell you what, that kind of pass has to be on point and receivable. It's got to be a catchable pass, Crooms. But watch this. Zip. Oh, yes. Bring it. That was a great look. And she's probably a little upset that the shot was off because it was such an outstanding pass. But that's got to be on the money. Think or you got to come out. I was going to say, yeah. otherwise you're going to get yanked. You're right? going to see somebody at the table, honey, if that goes out of bounds. But it's a good catch. <laughs> said that Janae Crooms has personality. She's got a little bit of personality with her game as well. She's got some pizzazz, and I just appreciate it. I love the confidence. There she is. Again, thought about the three. Instead, we'll take it inside. Mike Sell rips it away. Oh, but Mike Sell saying, hey, I have possession. They're calling a shot clock violation. Doesn't make too much of a difference. I don't know if Maryland really had a transition there. Yeah, if they had numbers. I can see Mike Sell being a little disappointed there, but you know the possession wasn't 100% in Maryland's hands when the shot clock went off. That's why they had to take it out of bounds. 13-point edge here. It's the largest lead of the game. Here is Mike Sell. Wielchich will let it fly, missing everything. Austin with the rebound. Out to Mike Sell. All she needs is a little space. And she missed that shot, but you can see the quick release that she has. Well, she doesn't need but a blink. And that thing is up and in the air. And, you know, for a kid to come in with that kind of work ethic and for Brenda Freeze to say, hey, I've coached Christy Tolliver, Marissa Coleman, you know, these players who have a high level of work ethic, but this freshman has come in and just blown the socks off of any player that she's had in her program. And that speaks volumes. All those players are in the WNBA. Yeah, blown up the Big Ten in terms of three-point shooting. She's got 59 here for the season. Tops in the Big Ten. And that's not just Big Ten freshmen. That's overall right. players in the Big Ten, freshmen through senior. So this is a kid who has made her mark because of her tremendous work ethic. Spin move for Patty. So those 59, by the way, get this, it already puts her 24th on the career list for three-point makes in Maryland history. And that's just insane. You're talking about Tiffany Brown. She's been like the great shooters in Maryland's program over the years. Carla Holmes. Maryland's matchup zone has really done wonders in terms of containing the painted area, not allowing Ohio State to creep in the paint, and they're getting boards in this second half, and that has made all the difference in the world for Maryland. Grande was in trouble, but somehow found Patty. They're looking for Santoro, trying to chase it down. And pa Patty will learn. You know, what a great hustle play by Carmen Grande, and I think Kevin McGuff appreciates that right here. Just jaws right there coming up behind you. Nobody tells her. But then when a post player gets the ball on the run like that, if you don't have control, even if you have numbers, but if you don't have control of the ball, pick it up and wait for the guard to come get it and get a better option for your team. But it's so tempting. You see that wide open yes, move in front of you. But people are coming, and you're not on balance. <laughs> you got to give it up. Into the corner for Miller. That's a three. Adriana Miller keeping hope alive for Ohio State. Still a chunk of time left to make a strong push. Well, Maryland was forced to call the timeout and talk about it. Again, trying to avoid the upset against Ohio State. Last time they were on this floor, they took it to Indiana and Michigan State. And frankly, that has been part of the story here in the Big Ten when you look at the standings. Rutgers dropped its first conference game last night against Iowa. You already have a ranked team in Michigan State that already has four losses in Big Ten play. And then it's interesting to see who has the, the two losses here, Iowa, Maryland, and Purdue.
Yeah, it, it's just been ridiculously exciting to look at scores day in and day out to see who has beaten whom. And then when you're looking at Michigan State, when Ohio State and Michigan State squared off, Ohio State held them 27 and a half points below their average point production in that game. So we're talking about Ohio State's defense in their last stretch of games and how how particularly efficient they've been on that side of the court. And that's why they were able to stay with Maryland for the most part, and that's why they're trying to climb back right now with some defensive stops. But Maryland's been knocking in shots. Bujacic once again with a three. She's not shy to shoot. Bujacic will put it up. Seven points now on the night. 20 minutes of play in this game. doing a good job of arriving on the catch in their 3-2 zone, not allowing anything inside, and just a tough pass there by Waterman, leading Grande a little too far ahead. Well, Ohio State loves to run that back door. We were joking kind of with Brenda Fries about it at shoot-around. Ohio State burned Penn State a couple of times in that game, once at the end of regulation and once in overtime. So you better believe that that was discussed. The Maryland practices this week. Well, that was definitely clipped off on the videos and shared with the team. Like, this cannot happen. Grande looking to take Lewis. A little in and out dribble there by Grande. But Maryland did a good job there getting back in transition. Look at Vujicic right there closing the elbow area. No creases. Charles with the block. Out to Watson, that time on the left wing. She was like she didn't have her legs under her on that shot. It was a good shot in terms of selection, but not execution. When you're talking about a Maryland team, you know the interior presence defensively is going to be right there. They average five blocks as a team. And right there, Charles with two hands on Jensen Coretti, who was up high for that shot. You mentioned that Charles can guard, what, one through four? Oh, sure. Comfortably? And, and sometimes five, depending on the personnel. Depending on the five. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Gustafson, that would be a tough match, but that's a tough match for anyone. So. It is, absolutely. <laughs> Megan Gustafson, we mentioned Iowa beating Rutgers. How about another double-double, 17 for the season? And she is just amazing. When she's on the floor for Iowa, she wears a cape. I mean, she is just a superpower personified. She just gets the job done, shooting 70% from the floor. It's just remarkable. And she hit a three the other day, so it's not just... She did. It's it not was just her, layups. It was her Lisa. first career three. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So it's, it's fun to see things like that happen for kids who put in the time. And, you know, it's probably not her first three she's ever taken in her life. I mean, she's worked on that, so that's why she felt confident enough to let it fly in the game. Did you hit a three? You know what? In the NCAA tournament, they said my toe was on the line, which I didn't think it was, but it would have been. I thought, Overseas, I hit some threes. Though. I thought you were going to say you played before the three-point shot. No, no, no. It was there. Not that <laughs> advanced in age to these scientists. Advanced in age. <laughs> well, I would have counted it for you, CWS. Good. Grande Good. takes it in, and Maryland's whistle for the foul. Ohio State trying to manufacture offense somehow, some way. So if they can get to the free throw line and try to obviously stop the clock and score. That would benefit them greatly here. That's the fourth personal on Charles. Grande's first free throw attempts. Only eight free throw attempts for Ohio State today. Number nine coming up. Some pressure here by Ohio State, 2-2-1. Two, two, Grande. No argument with that personal foul. Yeah, she came up, and that's one thing you can't do in a press. You know, when you have the ball handler who has gained some momentum in terms of speed, you can't rush them because they're going to go right by you. You've got to contain arm's distance away and then direct as a defender. Oh, 
Lewis got touched up there. She tried to make a drive. That's the first on Coretti. Trying to get Mike Sell off of an elevator. Look. And they find Austin. Maryland awfully successful out of that out of bounds. Well, they have so many options offensively. And again, when you take hard cuts, that opens up things for your teammates. No need to rush here for Maryland. Tim has all kinds of expectations. We showed you kind of the dominance. Mike Sell lets it fly. So whenever Maryland drops a game in conference play, everyone kind of says, well, what's wrong with the Terps? And that's exactly the kind of expectations that they have established, especially the first couple of years here in the conference. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, everyone understands that. So they circle when Maryland is on the calendar because they've been the standard in three consecutive Big Ten tournament championships. Last year, Ohio State beat Maryland in the championship at the tournament. But when you have that, I don't want to say it's pressure. I mean, pressure is a privilege. You want that. But you're going to get everybody's best game when you're at the top. Grande can't get it. Regular season and tournament titles in 15, 16, and 17. You mentioned Ohio State got them last year. Jones with a strong post up right, right there and the reach in by Miller. But Maryland going for a championship again this season. This are some of the remaining key games that they have left. They have to travel to Bloomington. Indiana always tough at home. They get a rematch against Rutgers. Nebraska has taken down some teams. Mm -hmm. And that meeting with Iowa is the only meeting of the year. And it could determine the Big Ten championship. Yeah, that's though, all of those matchups. I mean, you look at what Maryland has ahead Sunday at Indiana. That's going to be a tough one. They just beat Michigan State, or Michigan, I'm sorry, today, right before our game tonight. And then Rutgers hit nine threes in their victory in College Park, Maryland, and played one of the best games they've played all season. And they ripped off ten wins in a row before losing to Iowa. So it's just topsy-turvy. You just sit night in, night out. You just don't know. You have to be on your A-plus game, not just your A game, your A-plus game on both sides of the ball and ready to compete night in and night out in this conference. Stephanie Jones sitting out with a 20 points. The career high is 24 against Howard last year as Coretti draws the foul. Coming up next, so Coach, the big show recaps everything happening in the conference, highlights post-game interviews, and in-depth expert analysis. The big show after the game, right here on BTN. Kevin McGuff, a different kind of coaching here this year. He's even talked to the local media about this team and the fact that in years past, he would say, hey, Kelsey Mitchell, go get me a bucket. Hey, Stephanie Mavunga, go get me a bucket. Now he'll find himself having a meal at a restaurant. He'll look up and you might see an NBA game. He'll jot down a few X's and O's ideas or some yeah. five out offensive ideas if he sees a team running up. Yeah, he loves the Milwaukee Bucks. And Giannis Antetokounmpo and how he plays and he sees Dorka Juhas in that kind of role for Ohio State. See those two names in the same oh, sentence yeah. again. You have to say him slow. That was impressive. <laughs> Giannis Antetokounmpo. And Dorka Juhas, there she is. Yeah, she's that stretch five. And she can play some basketball. Her mom played on the national team in Hungary, won some championships internationally over there. And she just has it in her DNA. Justin Curetti, talented player, was Ohio Miss Basketball in 2016. No starts in her career. Now a junior. And if Juhas can't play, they could be giving more minutes to Coretti. Looking to her for a little bit more production maybe down the line. Yeah, and that's what Kevin McGuff told us today at practice. He said he just wants to see her 
play with a lot more consistency. You know, and it, she'll have a couple of good plays in a row in the game and then have a couple of bad ones to back it up. So when it balances out, it, it's tough. You know, coaches look at efficiency first. When they get the stat sheet, they're not looking at how many buckets did you get. Uh, you know, they're not looking at point production per se. They're looking at efficiency. What kinds of shots did you take? Were you 10 for 40 from the floor? You know, are you taking good shots for the team? Or are you efficiently playing within the system of the program? And Kevin McGuff wants to see more from Jensen Coletti in that regard. Miller's fouled out. For Ohio State, five points. She did pick up the three-point shot. That was big. She hadn't hit a three really in the last four games for the Buckeyes. One minute to play in the game, one minute to play. She finishes with five points here tonight. Final minute of this game. Ohio State certainly fought hard. They played Michigan tough. Three quarters strong. But Kevin McGuff said in the fourth quarter they kind of ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't close. And it was just a couple of possessions that they had to have that they didn't get in that game. They came up with a loss on the road. Michigan ended that game on a 13-3 run, including a very important putback from Nas Hillman, which ended up being the game-winning bucket. And she had 18 points in that game, and boy, another freshman in the Big Ten who is making some noise. But here it's Maryland holding Ohio State to just 11 points in this fourth quarter and stretching its lead out. Good hard fight for the home team in Ohio State. In the absence of Dorka Juhas. You see Brenda Freeze giving a handshake to the staff. But a good fight down the stretch for Maryland in terms of picking up their defense and taking better care of the basketball. Those two things were issues in the first half for the Turks. Yeah, 15 turnovers in the first half. Only single-digit turnovers in the second half. 70-57 to 57 is your final. And so Maryland keeps...